seven eight total sewer replacement and stormwater improvement project acquisitions of easements for construction YouTube video. My name is Bill Weaver, and I'll be uh, presenting this along with. Uh, My name is Tim Nolt. I'm the sewer department engineer. So we have a uh, thirty minute PowerPoint presentation. We'll go through. So to begin. Everyone uh, should have received a letter from the Township Authority if you have an easement that's needed to be acquired for the Sanitary Sewer Total Replacement Project and the BC7 project. There's uh, three different types of easements that were part of this letter that different homeowners received, either a temporary easement, a sanitary sewer easement, and construct temporary construction easement, and a combined sanitary sewer easement, temporary construction easement, and a stormwater conveyance improvement easement. So this presentation hopefully will help answer your questions. To start with, the project team includes yourselves as the property owners, the Board of Supervisors and the Sewer Authority Board, Brad Gottschall, the Township Manager, Shelly Smith is our administrative assistant to the township manager. She's also a notary who will be available to notarize the easement documents. Sewer department staff includes myself as the director, Tim Nolt is the engineer, Jim Wetzel is the operations supervisor, Eric Morgan is the replacement project coordinator, John Dibler is the INI coordinator, Christine Mayer is the sewer admin staff who will be accepting the easement agreements as well. Hannah Brown is our GIS tech. The project team for the engineers, uh, consulting sanitary sewer authority engineer is GHD. They designed the sewer project. Kevin Shannon is the project manager. Barry Wampler and Mitch Collins were the design engineers. And Melissa Smith was the project engineer. For the stormwater, the consulting stormwater engineer is HRG. Jason Hines is the project manager and stormwater program manager who designed the project and along with Jack Hildebrand who does the easement acquisitions. A little bit why we're here, background. We started realizing overflowing manholes and sewer basement backups back in 1993, exceeding interceptor capacities within the agreements with Harrisburg and uh, Swat Air Township Authority where the sewage is conveyed and treated. As a result, B PADEP is part of the Act 537 and Chapter 94 and Clean Stream Laws uh, issued violations. Following that, the Township and Swat Air Township Authority and DEP negotiate a, uh, a consent decree for requirements in the Beaver Creek Basin, which this project is located in. As part of that consent decree, we were required to replace, rehab, asbestos cement and clay sanitary sewers that have reached their useful life, including private sewers. This includes test and replace or repair of PVC sewers that fail an air test and are contributing unacceptable amounts of flow, including private sewers which this project does include some PVC sewer areas. Uh, we like to salvage PVC because that is today's standard, so we like to air test that first to make sure that we don't have to replace it. As part of this consent decree, we have to eliminate the overflows and basement backups by 2028, and we have to reduce the sewer system overload by 2033. And that includes reducing the flow in the sewer system so that it will properly function without the threat of sanitary sewer backups and overflows. And then finally, storage tanks may be required for future growth and to eliminate the sewer overflows. We have storage tanks um, that could be available to be located at the Conway Road site next to the landfill. We purchased the property and storage would be evaluated in 2026 to determine if we have to do it in the year 2033 or earlier if necessary. And then a little bit about the history of the stormwater system. The township receives the new MS4 permit, which is the um, acronym for a municipal separate stormwater system. And this is issued from the DEP. This new MS4 permit requires significant expenditures to comply with the new Chesapeake Bay pollution reduction requirements and new requirements to reduce sediment 
and the Paxton Creek watershed. At that time, the township hired a financial consultant firm, Raptelis, they're from North Carolina, to evaluate a stormwater feed to fund the required improvements. And then in November 2018, the township transferred the stormwater system to the Lower Paxton Township Authority. And then in December 2018, the authority adopt, adopted the stormwater fund budget and the rates, including a capital budget for stormwater improvements. The township then entered into an agreement with CRW and Susquehanna Township to complete the MS4 Joint Pollution Reduction Plan for the Bay and Paxton Creek to comply with MS4 permits. This was encouraged by DEP and supported by the three uh, municipalities uh, in an effort to uh, do joint projects that were more beneficial to the watershed and to each of the partners. And then in February 2019, the authority established the stormwater fee at $32 per quarter per ERU. And then in July 2019, the stormwater fee of $32 a quarter was then billed with the quarterly sanitary sewer billing. And then recently, the township partnered with PennDOT, CRW, and Susquehanna to complete MS4 permit PRP projects. And bids are being open uh, today. Uh, to complete uh, portions of the five-year permit requirements. So a little bit about why we're here in the project summary. This project will consist of replacing 6.6 .6 miles of the existing neighborhood sanitary sewer system, including 205 manholes, 596 private building sewers on private property, and portions of the 3.8 miles of stormwater conveyance system including 255 associated drainage structures. Other miscellaneous work includes right-of-way clearing, bypass pumping, ADA ramp construction, and restoration of paving, curbs, sidewalks, and yards and right-of-ways. The project is estimated to cost $19 million. Now we will have a separate meeting to be held for the property owners in late 2021 to discuss, discuss what to expect during construction and to inquire, acquire the necessary private sewer replacement agreements. Uh, the project requires replacement of all private sewers along with the mainline sewers in order to reduce the overload. Uh, right now, we just need to acquire the sanitary sewer mainline easements that are off the street. Uh, to submit to DEP, which we're going to explain further in the presentation following here. Uh, the, the private sewer replacement agreements, uh, we have, again, over 500 of those, and we break out into two public meetings because of the size, and those will be co um, coming out in late 2021. So a little bit about the project area. Uh, the acronyms we use for our flow basins for metering is BC7 and 8, but essentially this is uh, everything um, just north of Devonshire Road, Devonshire Heights Road, um, and would be west of Nye's Road. That would be the BC7 area. And then BC8 is just uh, southeast of BC7. And again, this whole project affects over 500 property owners. So again, why we're here, acquisition of easements, the PEA DEP design criteria for sanitary sewer and stormwater replacement projects requires engineers to minimize impacts to streams and wetlands. The authority acquired sewer easements in 1970 from the affected property owners as part of the original sewer construction. However, the new easements must now be acquired for this BC78 project due to the need to relocate the sewers to minimize the impacts to wetlands and streams as required by DEP. Sewers may also be moved to improve on the existing layout. So Tim, coming up on the next few slides here, will explain more about why these new easements are required and these impacts to wetlands and streams, and also provide examples of the type of easements that are, are needed and, and what each property owner 
uh, had received in various different types of easements. And again, the acquisition of all easements is required prior to submitting the environmental permit applications to DEP. Upon request, township staff and the engineer will meet with the affected property owners to discuss the permanent and or temporary easement agreement and to address any concerns or impacts that the easement and relocation as applicable may have on the private property owner. We encourage these meetings. Uh, oftentimes, property owners call and ask to discuss specific situations that we are not privy to without physically meeting at the site and reviewing um, any type of uh, issues that may be affected by the sewer construction. Specifically, following construction, all easement areas will be restored to existing condition at no expense to the property owner. Obstructions over the proposed sewer will be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. And again, we encourage that on-site meeting to go over these. Examples that we run into mostly include sheds, fences, and trees. In most cases, sheds can be relocated uh, depending on the size, in most cases we can remove it. We don't guarantee um, the condition of it unless the property owner wants to use their own contractor, but in past history we haven't had any problems um, moving the sheds. Fences temporarily removed will be re uh, replaced, so we, we can take the fence down and put it back up. Uh, we don't like fences in the right-of-way. If we do put it back up and you still want it in the right-of-way, we will require a gate to be installed. And trees replaced in a different location adjacent to the easement area. So if you have trees in the sewer easement, we'll take them down and we will provide some tree um, installations, but not actually over the sewer line. So a total of 90 easements must be acquired to construct this project. And I will turn it over to Tim to finish up the presentation. Okay, I will go over a couple of different types of easements and just provide a few examples of, of each. Uh, the first thing you need to do when you receive the plat, this, this is an example of a plat right here. It's just a basic drawing. Um, you need to determine if, if it's a temporary easement or a permanent easement. And that's relatively simple to do. Um, if you go down to the legend portion on the drawing, there's different shading of gray. So you can identify whether it's a temporary or a permanent. Um, as the name suggests, temporary easement is just a short-term easement that provides our contractor with the ability to access your property for construction purposes. Uh, so this basically provides the contractor with a little bit of additional area to perform their work. Uh, when the construction is completed, temporary easement is automatically extinguished. The second type is permanent easement, and this provides our contractor with the ability to install a new permanent pipe or outfall structure on the property. Um, it's important to note with permanent easement, Lower Paxton Township does not take possession of the portion of your property within that easement area. Uh, the easement just provides us with the, you know, the uh, free and clear access to install that facility and maintain it in the future. So this first example here, uh, Bill, if you go back to the previous, uh, go back one more. So this, this example here shows um, a temporary easement on Glenwood Avenue. Uh, again, just providing the contractor with additional room to construct the, the sewer facility that's in Glenwood Avenue. The second example is both permanent and temporary easement. Uh, again, the first thing you do, you take a look at the legend and you can see here the different shades, the different types of easement. Uh, permanent 
sanitary sewer easement is typically 30 feet wide. Uh, in areas where it's feasible to do so, we'll have 30 feet of permanent easement surrounded by 10 feet of temporary on either side for a total easement area of 50 feet. And again, the two 10 foot temporary easements will be automatically extinguished after construction is completed. In this example here, we have temporary easement on what would be the east side of the permanent easement. But on the west side, you can see we have a creek and I'll go through a little more detail on these type of relocations. You can see this particular property. Uh, we have an existing sewer that due to its location needs to be relocated and we need to obtain easement to do so. Uh, next example here, this shows a property with uh, both storm facilities and sanitary sewer facilities. So in this situation, there's a 25 foot wide permanent storm easement, a 30 foot wide permanent sanitary easement. And because the location of those two new facilities is so close, uh, we also are obtaining some temporary easement as part of this as well for the contractor. Um, we're trying to combine these so when you do have sanitary and storm, storm sewer on the property, we're obtaining a single easement, you know, to kind of keep it, to, to keep it clear, you know, you have one plat for your property and not, not various plats. And the final easement example is storm sewer only. So this particular property has a storm, a new storm pipe that will be located on it, but it does not have a sanitary main line on the property. So same concept here, permanent easement is shown. Um, you can see the permanent easement areas in the, the hatching here. So to provide some additional detail, if you have an existing sewer on your property and, and we are relocating as part of this project, um, there's a couple reasons for that. So one is what you can see here in this picture. I mean, pretty clearly uh, this manhole, this sanitary sewer manhole wasn't installed in this location back in the 60s or 70s, but over time, the the creek had you know relocated itself around and now the manhole is located in the creek so when we go to replace something like this we're required as part of our permitting to reduce the environmental impacts uh, to to reduce the number of crossings stream crossings wetland crossings so a situation like this is is a really good example of you know why we need to to relocate the facilities that were put in uh, about 50 years ago. And this is a, just another example of that. You can see the existing sewer line is within 10 feet of the creek and we're moving the, the sewer away from the creek um, in order to reduce that that impact on, on the stream bank. So the permitting requirements today are much different than they were when the, the original system went in. So we're trying to, you know, relocate and reduce the environmental impact on, for this work. So our process, uh, just briefly here, we go through and identify the wetland and stream impacts on the sewers. Uh, this, this was already done and this was kind of the initial process, you know, as far as um, survey and then field work to determine where the, the uh, existing facilities are. That's what you have as far as the plats. Uh, we prepared the plats and sent the easement agreements to the property owners. Um, the, 
the meeting we're having our public meeting here obviously today um, as bill said we encourage property owners to call in and schedule a time that we can meet in the field and uh, if you if you do have specific questions we can go over them and and kind of see more uh, of some of your concerns you may have in the field Uh, then, you know, when, when we get the, we'll get the easement agreements back and kind of, I believe Bill touched on it, but the reason that we're doing this, and you'll see in the schedule here in a minute, that we're doing this ahead of the whole process um, is because of the permitting process and how long it's, it's taken in the past. Uh, we try to get all of the easements sort of set in stone, work with the property owners, and establish where the sewer line is before we submit the the permit applications to to DEP. So there'll be a gap here, but the notice will go out for work on the private property sometime in 2021. And you'll have the the private sewer agreement which will be a totally separate process from this will come out, perform the house inspections. Uh, hopefully by that time we are kind of in the process or we're getting the permits from, from DEP that we talked about. The design will be finalized for the two consultants on the sanitary side, GHD, and on the storm sewer side, HRG. Uh, we'll go through the bidding process and award the contract to a a single contractor. Then the contractor will perform their work. Um, as Bill mentioned, the areas within easements will be restored to their existing condition. And then we monitor for long term success. So here's some milestones for our schedule. Um, like I said, if we could schedule the meetings with the, the property owners, if you do have particular questions about your property, uh, we'd like to handle that within the next couple months here as we can have meetings in the field. Um, then we'll receive these agreements, hopefully uh, kind of work through that process and be able to, to finalize the easements so that we can submit our permit in September of this year. If, um, and, and again, the, there is that gap there. You see September 2020 for the permits, and then we're, we're kind of working through design. So this is the, the initial step to kind of, to, to finalize the, the easements and finalize the permitting. Our public meeting we anticipate for the fall of 2021. And after that, we'll receive the private building sewer agreements, uh, go through bidding this project. And the, the goal at this point is to start construction uh, by at least January of 2022. So the property owner responsibilities uh, like I said, that, you know, if you have particular questions on, on the easement and you want to discuss some items in the field, uh, feel free to, to get in touch with us and schedule a meeting. Um, if you don't have questions and we've explained it well enough today, you know, you can go through and, and uh, sign and submit, have the, have the paperwork notarized and submit the paperwork to us. Um, we do have some tight deadlines as Bill mentioned with the consent decree. So if, if we don't hear anything back um, after 30 days, we need to kind of go start the process of uh, condemnation for these easements. Other responsibilities uh, when construction is, is occurring, if you could notify us of any private utilities uh, not so much, you know, your water service coming from the street or 
a gas line or electric, but more uh, dog fences, um, you know, sprinkler systems, electric for a swimming pool, that sort of thing. And then today we talked about everything on the public side and all the sanitary sewer and storm sewer that's going to be replaced on the, on the public side. As we alluded to, there'll be a separate meeting about the private side, and that'll be uh, what the private sewer replacement agreement covers. Okay, just to finish up here, uh, we like to uh, point out the benefits to the community as part of these projects. We do have a 50-year-old public sewer system asset that is now replaced or rehab, including private sewers as part of these projects. The community asset is maintained and preserved as required. Environment is protected and elimination of overflows and basement backups are, are achieved. And as part of that, right now, the sanitary sewer rates uh, are currently scheduled to remain at $153 a quarter in 2021. However, to fund this program over 20 years, nominal increases at 3% will occur in future years from time to time to fund the remaining consent order projects. For stormwater, that's uh, a newer program. Those fees are scheduled to re um, be reevaluated by the board along with the credit program and credits are scheduled to be available beginning in 2021. So we encourage you to please visit the township webpage uh, to look for updates on the credit policy and the rates. Credits will be available to residential and commercial property owners uh, in 2021. We also encourage you to visit the Township Sewer and Stormwater Projects website to stay updated on the project. As Tim pointed out on the schedule, uh, we don't anticipate really starting construction until January 2022, which is pretty far out there. Uh, again, the reason we're having this YouTube presentation today and we've mailed out these agreements is it takes DEP almost a year to review wetland permit applications. Uh, they have to also be sent to the Army Corps of Engineer. So we need to acquire all these easements, acquire the permits, and then go to bid. So when you go to this sewer and stormwater projects website, you'll be able to uh, sign up to receive project updates via email or mobile app. And then you can also, when the project is active, uh, Tim can walk you through and, and explain Tim's going to click on this uh, at work site, see if it works here. Bear with us for a minute. So we started this storm, sewer and stormwater projects uh, at work site with our last project and it's been uh, very uh, well received by the public and lots of people have been using this to get updates on our current project of when the contractor is going to be moving into their new. So this, you can see Tim's just going on to this link and for the sanitary sewer you click on the project, you can see there BC7 to the right. Those are the three active projects right now. The two to the left are in construction. Obviously, this BC7 is in the design phase. And then you can basically navigate through there and click on uh, which ones you want to look at, either sanitary, sewer, or stormwater. And this map will be popping up that shows the shaded areas for the work scope in the project areas that are colored and you can zoom in and navigate and figure out where your property is and when when you click on that area uh, you'll be available to see uh, property uh, information and when the project is scheduled to be um, starting construction and again you can get alerts uh, we we will be 
in addition to your availability to this site, again, we will be, if you sign up to receive project updates via email or mobile app, when we get closer to coming into your neighborhood, we will send out a uh, alert uh, via email and phone uh, notifying when that project will begin in that area. So finally, to schedule a meeting, Please, please call us at the Township Sewer Department at 657-5617 and ask for Tim or myself. And in the interim, before you schedule a meeting, you can also send questions to mynewsewer at lowerpaxton-pa.gov, and we can respond to your questions uh, before we meet, if you'd like, as well. Uh, I need to mention with the COVID-19, pandemic uh, we certainly um, are when the public is available uh, to um, commute and the stay-at-home work order is lifted our staff will then have the ability to come out and meet with with you at your property we of course will be following the social distancing guidelines from the CDC and we can still effectively meet with social distancing in the field to address any concerns that you have but you can also if you're not comfortable doing that we can communicate by, by, by phone or email, but again, we encourage to, to meet in the field. So we hope that this YouTube video has answered some questions on the easement agreement that you received. If you're satisfied with this uh, presentation and it's answered your questions, you can call us at the number on, on um, 657-5617, ask for Natalie, and she will schedule uh, our notary, who is Shelly Smith, to meet you uh, to get the notary completed. If if the office is still not open, we can meet out in, in the vestibule. Um, if not, uh, then you can also uh, wait until the uh, stay-at-home work is completed and we, our office is fully open. But in the interim, again, you can call 657-5617, call ask for Nally and we can still get that easement document notarized. Uh, the temporary easement is the only document that does not require a notary, and if you're satisfied, you can just sign that and return it to the township. Uh, again, thank you for um, viewing our YouTube presentation.